beautiful Francis Fox. Thank you so much for being here in my blooming alley. Hope to see you again soon. We will get to you, both of you. We will get to you as well, all of you lot. We've already addressed you. Haha, <laughs> standing to attention. As well as all of you lot have been addressed. You're still very welcome here in my blooming alley. As is everybody else. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're here the first time, this is Ninja Orchids in Southern Spain in the blooming alley in July of 2021. And what a blooming alley it is so far. And there's more to come, not only in this video, but more as far as buds are concerned. And I'm so happy. But for everybody watching this video right now, yes and no. Yes, I'm here in the Blooming Alley. No, I'm not pulling out this Epidendrum Multiforme Cross the Capricornu. It is very big. There is a lot going on on its shelf. It is precarious to keep moving it back and forth. So I do hope the shadows aren't too harsh. While I say welcome to another edition of Blooms for You, where I dedicate my blooms as they are blooming to everybody who's commented on my videos and that I can see who has subscribed. I want to say thank you. When I start off like this, this is a dedication to everybody who watches this video, whether you are subscribed or not. I hope that you are doing well. The fact that you clicked on this video, I really appreciate your time. Maybe afterwards you might consider leaving a comment and I can put you on the list. Maybe at some point in time, you might even consider hitting that subscribe button. That would help me a lot. I really appreciate having you here. Let's go and see which other blooms have been picked and say thank you. This is a massive IOU dedication. Renanthera monachica will always go to my monachica on the other side of the pond. Now there's two of you. So to the two monachicas, well, there can only be one monachica. So let's call her ma petite fleur. Yeah, you two are such wonderful support. At first there was only one of you and that was massive. Now there's two of you. That is epic. I love it. I hope that you are both doing really, really well. And this IOU dedication of my Renanthera Monachica is the IOU for your support here on my channel, also from day one. You don't really know me, but you know me very, very well. And I appreciate your kindness, your communications, your emails, your comments, and now your petit fleur. Oh my goodness, the two of you, you warm my heart. Thank you very, very much for everything over this past year. Almost feels like we've turned full circle except my Renanthera this year is still alive and still in bloom. <laughs> yes, if you didn't know and you see this video for the first time or new to my channel, this is my Renanthera Monachica 2.0. Its predecessor went elsewhere, didn't want to stick around after being with me for over two years. I grew it on from a seedling, I got it to bloom. Hence, the Monachica went to my Monachica, if that makes sense. And then she promptly dumped her blooms. So I feel a massive IOU is necessary. And unfortunately, my spike didn't actually stay in bloom all the way from the back here. And the branching didn't develop either, which is a shame. I don't want to get greedy. She's still alive. She's here. And a lot more blooms to give to you, Mona Chica and Ma Petit Fleur. Love you to bits. And here we come to Golden Peacock. Let me just say, with all the fragrances going on, there are just some orchids that go, meh, I'm too pretty. I don't need a fragrance. I'm gorgeous enough. And Golden Peacock will fall into that category. Beautiful, beautiful, bright orange. Who needs a fragrance with blooms and colors like that? <laughs> so, <laughs> Laura Martinez and Michael Burns. I have a summer spike after her radical repot and root refresh and division earlier this year she has still blessed me with a spike. Five blooms, I'll take it. I wasn't expecting anything, seeing as the growth in the back is also a little bit shorter in comparison to what she can do. 
What a giving orchid she is. Still managed to get five blooms. I have another growth coming right here. And now I'm gonna be so bold and say, well, this had better bloom as well. After what I did to her earlier in the year, to be doing this right now, yeah, we can surely get another spike out of her during the summer. Laura Martinez, your support is very much appreciated, as is yours, Michael Burns. Thank you very, very much. I hope that you'd like orange. <laughs> My golden peacock, Pro Catabola golden peacock to be exact. She blooms for you to say thank you very, very much. Miaela Nicolescu and 43799. This is my Vanda Chau Praia. It's her fourth spike of the year. The first ones were out in about March but this is the best spike so far, color-wise, and she's fragrant. This is news to me. She wasn't fragrant the last time we saw her, but now, and I'm going to just hedge a bet here, that she is fragrant and she smells like violets. And this is where my questions always arise. Do our brains assimilate a color or something, and then the fragrance is clear in one's head? Or does this orchid actually have a violet fragrance? I don't know, but it's delicious. And it's getting more and more intense as the days go by, as she opens and matures further. This spike has now been open about a week, and what you see on the viewfinder is very true to reality. The colors are perfect. What I'm seeing on the screen and what I'm seeing in real life. And I'm really glad that this orchid is actually managing to hold on because she is on a totem pole. And that is not a good thing here in southern Spain where I hardly have any humidity to be able to sustain her, take care of her. And a lot of spraying goes on during the day around this orchid to keep her happy. You can see the hedge in the back here. I make sure that that stays damp when I'm spraying the orchid. I spray the back as well. The weeds and the vines in the back are doing the best along the entire hedge. Go figure. But it is a sort of a microclimate that I can maintain and uphold because she is completely bare root, with the exception of very, very long aerial roots from years gone by that I have submerged into a vase of water permanently. They are somewhat viable. I checked them. I'm not going to show you right now because it's so much nicer to look at the blooms but it is like a full water culture just to help me along. I'm hoping that they're doing a good job down there. Sometimes I feel like the root tips are extending and then sometimes I feel this is pointless, but I have them in water nonetheless, just in case. Still, nine blooms on the fourth spike, maturing to its beautiful, the way it should be Chao Praia and why I bought her colors. A thank you to Miaela Nicolescu and 43799 for your support of my channel and my Vanda Chao Praia with her gorgeous, gorgeous violet fragrance. She blooms for you. Alanopsis Tabasco Tex. Second bloom, third bloom. I am not waiting for the fourth bloom to open so that I can dedicate two very, very pristine blooms to Andrea Coco and Raquelita. And I say two pristine blooms, and that's why I'm not waiting, is because look what's going on with bloom number three. Now she doesn't look that pretty, does she? But she does add color. Oh, I'm not gonna take her off. I don't know why this suffered. It could be a pest issue that I didn't see in time. But it happened after the bloom opened, so I'm just wondering what's going on there. I don't want to pop her off. She's still fresh. She still has her fragrance. And I hope you don't mind. It might just spoil a little bit from the display of the other two. I just don't have the heart. The pop of color is so welcome. So forgive me, Andrea Coco and Raquelita, for not exactly the perfect, perfect background display. But I hope that you can still enjoy and focus on the two blooms that are each dedicated to you to say thank you so very much for your support on my channel here. Slowly but surely, you can see I'm getting down to frame in my list 
people that have been with me for quite some time must be thinking I have forgotten about them. No, I have not. I've got you all documented. Everybody that comments, everybody that subscribes, that I can see that has subscribed, you're all documented. If nothing else, I've got good list going skills. <laughs> anyway, there's a beautiful fragrance going on here with my Tabasco Tex. It's one of those very pleasant, typical, that you would call novelty hybrid, sweet, candy-like fragrances if one can call that even typical, but let's just say it's the commonly described fragrance that Tabasco Tex also has. But uh, the Tabasco is in the name for a reason because there is a hint of spice in the background, which I find very pleasant. I like spicy things. I like sweet and spicy together combined. And even if there is a candy like a Baby Ruth or something, that's not what she smells like, but a Baby Ruth chewing gum that has a bit of a kick in it, I like that. So this fragrance is very, very welcome in my blooming alley at the moment. But know that every time I look at her, with her two blooms intact here, that I think of you, Andrea Coco, and you, Raquelita. Thank you so much for your support here on my channel. It is so nice and shady here on the west side. I'm gonna stay here. It also appears to be a little bit quieter than if I was trying to find another spot on my patio. But I think that this is also a really nice little different contrast to be able to dedicate my fifth bloom, this one right here, of my Cornus Survey variety Chateladei, Phalaenopsis Cornus Survey variety Chateladei, to pick Smala to say thank you very, very much for your support here on my channel. I am expecting one more bloom back here to come, but you see, they're holding hands. How cute, they don't want to go apart. There's another one right there. This one's about to fade. This one looks a little bit dehydrated to me, but when you're in the shade, things look a little bit different as opposed to when you're in the sun. So this one, as you can see by the stalk, it's about, would you stop holding hands, please? That's okay, I'll put you back together. You can see here by the stalk that it is about to fade and the other one is a little bit greener. So yeah, in the sun, blooms do change. All right, go back to holding hands. So I have the fifth bloom, the sixth one is on the way. Can't volunteer any Three Stooges today. So we've just got the terrific duo here for Pixmala. Thank you so much for your support on my channel, my fifth bloom here of my Tiki Sal, Salonopsis Cornusurvi variety Chatelade. Blooms for you to say thank you to you very, very much. You're very much appreciated and I sincerely hope that you're doing well in your part of the world. Little spin around for this orchid, just to give a quick update. It is maturing its leaf of the season. I'm probably gonna get another one, which is great. Normally I do not. Normally I only get one leaf, so if she's giving me two this season, that is awesome. That'll be a first. But you can see how great she's doing back here on the root front. Isn't that a sight for sore eyes? Oh my goodness. I love it. Lots of spraying and misting going on. Oh yes, and the spike. Check it out. Ta-da. Elongating. So we'll see how that spike develops throughout the season, whether it's still going to have time to bloom or if it's just going to be a bloomer for next year. The more the merrier, I say. Back to the blooms, Pixmala. Thank you. Really appreciate your support on my channel. Staying once again on my west side. This is working out really well. Here is a complicated one for me to film. For Daryl Adams, I have the second bloom of my Sologeny Lime Bay. The first one dropped off. Number two is looking divine. Still smelling like a dusty room. Yes, that is something that will never change probably on the fragrance of this orchid. <laughs> a dusty room. It is not an unpleasant smell, but it does make you want to go to the window and just open the curtains and let some fresh air into that room. But she is such an elegant bloom. She defies the fragrance just by the beauty of this bloom. Look at the detail there. I am really enjoying being able to film 
in this part of the patio today and that the light is actually doing the blooms justice, I don't really have to explain much. What you see is for real. The lime bay, because of the colors of the petals and sepals, have that translucent lime color. Very, very beautiful. Bloom number two. The orchid itself is also doing well. Let me see if I can not jiggle you around too much, get you up. And you can see there she's growing roots and they will be quite fine going into that pot. And if we're lucky, we might get another growth out of her this season. Wouldn't that be good? Like last year, maybe get a second spike. Because last year we had 13 blooms on one spike and then another growth grew out and produced another, a second spike. And at least I had an opportunity to have double spikes on my Sologeny Lime Bay for the first time. I'm wondering if I can repeat that this year. That would be amazing. But here we are, Daryl Adams. Thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. I hope that you are into Sologenies. It's not everybody's cup of tea. I love them. The sequential blooming trait. Look at it. It's like we diving off a diving board. It's just a beautiful, beautiful bloom. For you, Daryl Adams, second bloom, first spike of 2021. All yours. Thank you so much for your support. Brenda Jernigan, Mylalia Pacavia, first time blooms. I would like to dedicate them to you to say thank you to you for your support here on my channel. Being a first time bloomer, I can see some imperfections and I'm going to apologize in advance, Brenda. They are not perfect blooms, but they are so pretty. I just don't want to kind of give them up and wait for next year. And I hope that you like them anyway, but you can see that, that there's a color blotch right there, which I'm hoping is from an ant. Oh, but the lip, oh my goodness, that lip, look at this. Oh, that deep, rich, velvety color and it, the texture, the touch, it all matches. It's got this velvet, like a material texture to it. Very rich and beautiful. And the second bloom as well has some imperfections. And I'm really, really hoping these are first time blooming woes right here. Maybe an ant as well, something like that. Just a few little nibbles here and there. But if we combine the two, Brenda, I'm thinking that I can volunteer one perfect bloom if we take a little bit of a jigsaw of each of them. <laughs> and then I can give you a perfect bloom. Because, oh, I didn't want to pass these by. And if I'm going to be able to piece together the best parts of each bloom, then we have perfection. Very, very beautiful. I love seeing that this one has come onto its own and it is finally blooming. Lelia Pacavia, Brenda Jernigan, very happy to give you my first two blooms from this orchid. And now we wait because in the back, down here, <laughs> I have another growth and it's looking really, really good. I wonder if she's going to give me a double whammy this season. That would be amazing. But for now, I am enjoying these two. I don't have any fragrance at all. None whatsoever, not from the Poparata and nothing from a Tenebrosa. Maybe that also is all part of the first time blooming circumstances anyway. They're gorgeous, I think. I hope you like them as well, Brenda. Thank you so, so much for your support here on my channel. Really, really appreciate our exchanges in the comments. Such a little cutie, my Lelia Ketiana, also was dedicated in the previous episode of Blooms for You. Look at those though, and they go so fast. And I'm guessing that's just because of the heat. It could be because it's its first time bloom with me. I don't care. I'm just glad that I've seen it. So here's my Lelia Ketiana. One bloom is still okay. 
my mini 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 next to my biggie 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 <laughs> yes thank you everybody so very much for watching your time your support everything is so very much appreciated i hope that you stay safe have yourselves a wonderful day please take care bye